understanding how this stuff works will allow you to make educated decisions about how much to spend on your credit card and when to make payments to reduce your balance. Hello and welcome to Practical Personal Finance, where you get the information you need to understand and succeed with money. In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you about how interest charges work on credit cards. Then I'll help you understand how those interest charges are calculated each month. And finally, at the end of this video, I'll tell you three tips that will help you manage your credit cards in the most effective way possible. So you can eliminate debt and take full advantage of credit card rewards programs without any of the drawbacks. Let's start with the basics of credit card interest. When you use a credit card, you're technically taking out a small loan in order to make a purchase. And what happens when you borrow money? That's right, you get charged interest. How much interest? It all depends on the annual percentage rate, or APR. When you sign up for a credit card, you're assigned an APR by the credit card company based on your credit worthiness, or how reliable of a borrower you appear to be. If you have a high credit score, which is indicative of being a reliable borrower, you'll probably wind up with a low APR. By the same logic, someone with a low credit score will wind up with a higher APR if they can get approved for a credit card at all. And yes, most credit cards offer a grace period that allows you to pay off your balance in full without any interest fees attached. In that case, the APR doesn't really play a role. But when you don't pay your balance in full, that's where the APR comes into play and things start to get a little bit complicated. As soon as the due date on your credit card statement comes and goes without you paying the balance in full, the credit card company starts tacking on interest. And with most cards, that interest gets compounded on a daily basis. That's right, just two days after the due date, you'll already be paying interest on the interest. As an example, let's say you charged $1,000 on your credit card during the month of June. You get your statement in your email inbox with a balance of $1,000, and it's due on July 25th. If you paid the entire balance of $1,000 on or before July 25th, you don't have to pay any interest fees at all. But what if you had to pay to have your car repaired and you could only afford to pay $500? The remaining $500 would begin to accrue interest every single day until it was paid off. After a month, depending on your APR, you might owe $510. And on top of that, because you did not pay in full, you no longer get a grace period for next month's purchases. Interest now starts to accrue from the moment you swipe your card at the register. I'm sure you can see how this all starts to add up real quick. Next, I'm going to teach you about how credit card interest is calculated. But before I do that, if you're getting some value out of this video so far, let me know by giving me a thumbs up down below. Thanks. All right, now that you have a basic understanding of how credit card interest works, let's talk about how it's actually calculated. Although this is something that the credit card company will always be happy to do for you, I believe it's important to comprehend so you know exactly what you're getting into when you don't pay your monthly credit card bill in full. There is some math involved here, but as always, I'm going to do my best to walk through it slowly, step by step. There are several different ways that credit card companies calculate interest. The one I'm going to demonstrate here is the average daily balance method, but any method used will generally yield very similar results. To calculate interest using the average daily balance method, we'll need to determine the number of days in the billing cycle, the daily periodic rate, and of course, the average daily balance. The number of days in the billing cycle is pretty self-explanatory. It's typically 30 or 31 days, depending on the month, or 28 in the case of February. The daily periodic rate is the rate at which interest accrues on a daily basis. We already know the annual percentage rate, which is the rate that interest accrues on an annual basis. To get the daily periodic rate, all we need to do is divide the APR by 365, since there are 365 days in a year. And finally, the average daily balance is an average of what your account balance was on each day of the billing period. To calculate it, we'll need to add up what the balance was every single day throughout the month, then divide by the total number of days. Once we have that all figured out, we just need to multiply the average daily balance 
by the daily periodic rate, by the number of days in the billing cycle. Not too bad. As an example, let's say our billing cycle goes from June 1st through June 30th for a total of 30 days. Let's say our APR is 24%. We divide 24% by 365 days and we get 0.0658% for our daily periodic rate. And let's say we started the month with a balance of $2,000, charged another $1,200 to the card on June 11th, bringing the balance to $3,200, and made a $900 payment on June 21st, bringing the balance to $2,300. To get the average daily balance, we'll multiply $2,000 by 10 for the first 10 days, then multiply $3,200 by 10 for the next 10 days, and then multiply $2,300 by 10 for the final 10 days. Add all those up and divide by 30 total days, and we get an average daily balance of $2,500 for the month. Now all that's left to do is multiply the average daily balance of $2,500 by the periodic daily rate of 0.0658% in decimal format by 30 days, and the answer is $49.35 in interest fees for the month of June. Now, of course, the actual amount of interest could be a few cents more since the credit card company will calculate the interest and add it to the total on a daily basis. But the average daily balance method does get you a pretty good approximation without doing a lot more math. Before I wrap this video up, I wanna give you my three tips for minimizing the amount of interest fees you'll need to pay as a card holder. Tip number one is to understand that the rules change when you start considering cash advances and balance transfers. A cash advance is when you use your credit card to withdraw cash at an ATM. A balance transfer is when you use one credit card to pay off another credit card in order to take advantage of a lower interest rate. In both cases, you may not have the benefits of a grace period when you're not being charged interest. And on top of that, the APR tends to be higher for these sorts of transactions. Keep both of those factors in mind if you're considering a cash advance or a balance transfer. Tip number two is to always pay your balance on time and in full. I know this can be easier said than done, but if you want to avoid paying interest fees on credit card purchases, this is the way to do it. To be successful, I recommend only making purchases on a credit card after you've planned for them in advance and only after you have the money for those purchases in your checking account. As an added protection, turn on auto pay for the full statement amount in case you ever forget to go and make the payment manually. My third and final tip is to make payments toward your credit card balance as frequently as possible if you've been unable to pay in full and interest is accruing. The more you pay, the more you can reduce your average daily balance and the less interest that will accrue on your account. Even though I don't carry a balance on either of my credit cards, I personally like to zero out the balance on my cards every week so it doesn't pile up throughout the month. This also keeps the balance on my monthly statement to a minimum, which helps to maximize my credit score. Have you ever paid interest on a credit card? Did you eventually get it paid off and have your grace period reinstated? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll enjoy learning about secured credit cards and how they can help you build credit. Click right here to watch. And if you're not yet a PPF subscriber, click right here to hop on board. As always, Thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Shear, and I'll see you next time.